Welcome to The Map. My name is Selena Garofino. If you are enjoying these videos, please do like and subscribe. On my website, you can acquire a free five-day rest and renew yoga course when you join my little newsletter. I offer 200, 300, 500 hour yoga teacher trainings all over the world and virtually, as well as transformative retreats. And I would love to be here to support you on your journey. Okay, today I want to talk about belonging and fitting yourself and the way in which we can practice our belonging with our own bodies. Your body was designed to fit itself. Human beings, like all things in great nature, follow the Fibonacci sequence, follow what is called the golden ratio, and you are perfectly fit to yourself. You are a sphere unto yourself. And yet, you are also part of the greater whole, and the sum is always greater than its parts. Oftentimes in life, we feel like we don't belong. We feel disconnected. But the reality is we're not meant to necessarily fit and belong with everyone else, but we are meant to fit and belong to ourselves. And that is where belonging has to originate from. And when we've got that down really well, we can interact with other beings from a place of curiosity and expression and inquiry rather than making assumptions about others or changing our outer form in hopes of more belonging, right? Jaya John, the author of Daughter Drink This Water, says really beautifully that we're not meant to be understood. We're meant to be experienced like all other phenomenon. And so often we run around trying to get people to understand something fundamental about us that they might not be able to because they are perceiving the world through their own experience and their lens. They're looking at the same tree as you and seeing something differently. And so when we stop trying to make everyone necessarily, um, we stop looking for ourselves and other people and instead let them experience us and us experience them from a place of receptivity, it really shifts everything relationally. We get so much more curious instead of always assuming things about other people. And the more secure we get in ourselves and confident in our own belonging and holding, we stop trying to fill, I call it the God hole, outside of ourselves from other human beings. So one of the ways we can embody and play with this is simply by playing with the ways in which the body fits and folds itself. The way that when you're folded at your hip, your knee fits in your armpit. The way when we're nice and balanced in our structure, we can take an opposite palm to an opposite elbow. And so that's what we're going to play with today is that self-containment. You a sphere unto yourself. You a part of the greater whole. And if anywhere today you don't fit yet, know that you do and play to the archetype. So even if it's not happening in the body today, imagine it is. And imagine that you're embodying and holding that archetype really well. And in time, the feelings and the physicality will progress and shift and evolve. Okay, so let's start in our seat. Anchor yourself so that your perineum is making good contact to whatever you're sitting on and your spine can really lift and rise. And we're just going to take a moment to open up the vision. So take opposite palm to opposite elbow in front of yourself so you have this good frame. Four things is always a frame. It's a border, a boundary. In Judeo-Christianity, it's the definition of paradise, right? It's the Garden of Eden. So it creates a condition of safety. And now as you breathe in, lift your elbows up right alongside of your ears so the lungs come forward and it's like you're in the center of a picture frame and then exhale and lower it back down. And now start to do that with a little bit of speed, pumping the breath through the nose. Good, keep going. Image that it's like you're tossing open the windows to your house so that you can get a nice crossbreed through this magical abode that we call the body, the house that is your own. So pump the breath and open and close the windows a few times so we're really starting to open the mind and cleanse the vision. About five more, five, four, three, Two, hold the elbows up at the top. Take a deep breath in. Three more little sips. One more little sniff. Hold your breath at the top. And now exhale and let it go, hands to thighs. Very good. Let's move into our movement. So come forward and set the blankets aside. We will use them again. So your towel or your blanket. 
have a couple blocks, and then place your hands directly underneath of your shoulders and your knees directly underneath of your hips. Now spread the tops of the feet on the mat. And now spin your hands in so your middle fingers touch, and that's exactly shoulder distance apart. And then I want you to pivot on the base of the thumb to bring the hands forward, and that's very specific, but that's gonna keep the alignment there. So on the base of the thumb, spin forward. And now you have 90 degree angles, frames in every direction. And we're gonna build a little bit of heat here. So we're gonna nice and rapid, inhale, arch the back, exhale, and let it go. So it's like a really rapid cat count. And think that you're really putting a wave through your spine from the bottom to the top. So you're integrating the ground of being, which is your lower body, the ground of doing, which is the arms and the heart center, and the ground of seeing, which is your head. And you are the thread that's holding it all together. You might be starting to get nice and warm here. It can be a little bit agitating. Keep stoking your personal fires. Keep pumping the breath and move some currency through. Good, and then pause in the center, take a nice deep breath in. Might be a little dizzy, exhale it out. Very good, place your left knee in the center of the mat and then cross your right knee behind your left so you're plugging the right knee into the back of the left. And right here, so there's this first sense of fitting ourselves. And even if it's not happening in actuality, imagine that you have this vesica Pisces, this really nice fit, right knee to left knee. And now flip your wrists all the way around. Make sure the hands don't come any closer together. Broaden your collarbones and spin your pelvis around to the right. Look gently out in front of you. When you drop the head, the back becomes a ball. So keep opening up the lungs. Keep plugging in the tops of your feet and stir your pelvis. And right now you're spinning to the right, which is the spin of consciousness. It's the spin of a watch face of time. So keep looking forward, move the breath through it. So nice, and then pause in the center of yourself. Take a nice deep breath in and then flip the palms back forward and switch the cross of the legs. So left knee comes behind right now, plug the tops of the feet in, and this time interlace your fingers and then pop that interlace directly underneath of your sternum. So here, this represents your third hand. So in Katoni Yoga, it's your left hand handling your heart, your right hand handling the world, and it's you right in the middle. And spin your pelvis around to the left now. And when we go left, we are being counterculture. We're moving into the lunar piece of ourselves, our natural core gifts, our natural core wisdom. So spin your pelvis around to the left, move your breath through it. So nice. And then pause in the center of yourself. Very good. Uncross your hands, uncross your legs, and move it back into a downward facing dog. Take your sitting bones up high to the sky and then give it a moment. You can bend one leg and then the other. And when you're ready, find some stability in the shape. A little bend in the knees to change the angle of the pelvis so that your sitting bones are high and there's a nice wave in the spine. Ears are right between your biceps, a gentle gaze forward. And then you're still drawing the heels towards the mat without straightening the legs and locking them out. Let's build a little more heat, inhale forward to a plank, exhale back to a dog, forward and back. And you can pump the breath through the form, look slightly forward as you take this movement. Good, three more, two, last one, hold the downward facing dog, so nice. Look forward and then step your right foot forward and your left foot forward. Measure two fists between your arches and hang over your legs. Very good, bring your fingertips to the floor and rock forward to the ball of the foot and then back into the heel. So you're playing the dialogue of the potential in the ball of the foot. It's like peering over the edge of a cliff and then back into the heels, which is digging your heels in, right? It's the metaphor of sitting back. So go forward and back. And then find the middle of yourself and just hang for a moment. And in your hang, think that your thighs are moving forward into your belly. 
and that your knees are moving out towards your armpits. Maybe opposite palm to opposite elbow, so you have another point of contact. All these points of contact fit together to move currency through the form. You belonging to you, you fitting you. Very good. Take your right hand to your left shin and your left hand to your right shin. So you're crisscrossed and your left arm is on top. And now pull your shins energetically out into your hands and lift your buttock bones. So there's this real sense of tension, of creating and expanding the boundary of the frame. Can think that you have a diagonal line from your right knee to your left buttock bone and your left knee to your right buttock bone. Very good. Nice, take the frame once again, it's right there, opposite palm to opposite elbow over your head. Keep your belly on your thighs and bend your knees and start to lift your chest so that you're parallel to the floor. And now sit back in your chair, pulling your belly off of your thighs and then push all the way up to stand and drive your pubic bone forward. So nice, and then uncross the arms, let them go at your side. And we've been very formal, so now take a moment and just sway side to side this chronic issue of microphones pulling my pants down, so pardon all the adjusting. Good. And then pause right back in the center of yourself. Anchor down through your feet once again. And here we're going to play with a little bit different movement pattern. So take your right elbow underneath of your left, like Garudasana arms, and then swing around and catch your left wrist with your right hand and make a fist in your left hand. Take your feet hip distance apart and then hook your chin right over your left bicep. It's going to feel a little strange. It's putting some pressure in the thyroid. And now inhale and lift your elbows up and then exhale, bend your knees, sink back into chair pose. Now keep folding until your belly comes to your thighs and your knees come to your armpits. And now start to lift your buttock bones. From here, take your right hand to your left shin left hand to right shin, and then straighten the legs again as you hug your shins out into the palms of your hands, just like we did before. Very nice. One more breath here. Good. Keep your left hand where it is. Little bend in the knees, or maybe even a big bend. Find a little sense of a back bend, sternum forward, and now unthread your right arm and twist to the right, right arm to the sky. Cross your right arm over your left and fold back down. Okay, now your left arm is on the bottom, so cross at your elbows, and now catch your right wrist with your left hand and make a fist in your right hand. So we're on the other side. Hook your chin over your right bicep, bend your knees, sit back into chair pose, lifting the elbows high, push all the way to stand, pubic bone forward. Good, re-bend the knees, sit back in chair. Fold back down, knees to armpits, belly to thighs. Right here, left hand to right shin. Right hand is on top. It crosses over and grabs your left shin. And then hang over the legs again. Pull the shins apart into your hands. Now your left hand is on the bottom. We're going to twist left. So bend the knees a little bit. And now unthread your left arm. Spin your torso to the left. Good. Take your left arm forward. Cross it over the right. Hang over the legs again. This time, undo the cross of the arms. Reach behind yourself and pick up your heels with the palms of your hands. Good. And nestle in close to yourself. So your knees are in your armpits, belly is in your thighs, and you're really pulling up on the heels, supporting yourself. Very good. I want you to have such good contact with yourself that as you start to bend your knees, you'll feel... You're very, very supported, so bend your knees more and send your tailbone back and your sternum forward. Start to pull up on your heels as your tailbone goes back and your sternum goes forward, and you should be able to just float your heels up off of the floor by virtue of the contact. It's like a magic cube. It's held together by the fit and the fold, knees to armpits, hip crease, tailbone moving back, sternum forward, floating up onto the balls of your feet, holding your heels. So good. Slowly descend the heels. Re-straighten your legs. Fold over yourself. And now uncrasp the heels. Clasp, pardon me, and just sway side to side. Very nice job, you guys. Plant your hands and walk it back to a downward facing dog. Generous bend in the knees. Sitting bones high. 
unfold it forward into a plank, and now draw your pubic bone towards the mat, two strong legs, balls of the feet, heart forward, and then lift your buttock bones high, back to a downward facing dog once again. Very good. Travel your right foot forward into a lunge. From here, get your right knee right in your armpit, get your back heel nice and high, and take your hands out to 10 and two. Throw your knee forward into your armpit, look forward. Now make a fist in your right hand and act like you are stirring a giant kettle. And this is for flushing the lymph. It might be a little crunchy in there, might get some little zingers. Stay strong in the legs. Keep finding that little sense of a back bend. Maybe change directions of the spin. So good. Very nice, you guys. Now pause. Take your hands back in. Crawl them forward and start to lengthen your right leg. Think back of the right knee up to the right buttock bone. Back of the right knee down to the ball of the right foot. The leg's not going to straighten all the way if you maintain the contact with yourself. The more points of contact, the more sense of security there is, the more calm, the more steadiness, and there is real freedom in the containment. Rebend your right knee, lower your left knee to the floor. We're going to pick up the right foot. So start to pick up your right foot and then make full contact, right palm to the right sole of the foot, left fingertips way forward, hinge your buttock bones back. So you're expanding and opening through the left side. And breathe here. Good. Right knee is in the right armpit. So nice. Reshift forward and step back to a downward facing dog. And just feel for a moment two sides of the body. If you wish, come forward and unfold it into an up dog. And then back to the down dog. And right away, lunge your left foot. Good. So once again, hands will start out at 10 and 2. Get your left knee right in your armpit. Back heel high, fingertips out nice and wide. So your sacrum is in line with your shoulder blades. Make a fist in your left hand and then stir a pot. Big stir of the pot. Traveling around yourself, flushing the lymph, finding that little sense of a back bend from the pubic bone to the sternum. Good. Pause there and then start to lengthen the left leg. So fingertips of both hands travel forward and then from the ball of the left foot to your left buttock bone, lengthen your leg. Keep the back heel lifted on the right foot so it's buoyant and voluminous. Lengthen the whole of the front body and feel the stability of you fitting you. How much more range do you have when you're connected, grounded and stable in yourself? Good, re-bend your front knee, drop the back knee down. When we create our own sense of belonging, pick up the left foot, palm a hand to sole of foot, and hinge back. When we connect with our own belonging, we don't expect so much from other people, and we're able to be a lot more present to what they're offering us in any given moment instead of a constant pursuit of creating our security and our stability for us. We're not seeking praise externally, but we're internally validated and then able to love from that really clear, kind place. What a gift, right, for us and for others. Rebend your left knee and step back to down dog. Once again, organize it really well. So there's a crease in the hips. Your thighs are coming towards your belly. Your heels are sinking towards the earth. There's a wave in your spine. Really beautiful. Good. Take your right foot forward. And now pivot on your mat to the long edge of your mat so your feet are parallel to one another and stand up. Super nice. Shorten the stance a little bit facing the long edge. We're going to take a little series similar to what we did at the top of the mat and you're going to need to pay attention to all these crisscrosses in the arms. It's so good for your neurology. It insulates the neurology, trains our brain. So good for you. Trace the backs of your legs and fold down. And from here, shorten the stance a bit and now take your right hand to your left shin 
and your left hand across to your right shin. And now only widen your feet away from each other as much as you can really keep full contact with your shins. Bend your knees a little bit so there's a real sense of buoyancy and you can lift the buttock bones. Very nice. Now, from here, you're gonna take your right arm up to the sky and spiral your torso to the right. Lengthen your left side body. And now swim your right arm over your left and cross and grab a hold of the left shin. Let's do the other side. Take your left arm out and spin yourself left. Full contact. Take your left arm over and grab a hold of your right shin. Very good. Now here, I want you to just bend right into Garudasana arms. It's right there. Left arm is on top. Right hand grabs left wrist. Make a fist in your left hand. Now punch your elbows and your fists forward and bend your knees deeply so you're sitting like a baseball umpire. And then lift the elbows up. Look forward. Be so powerful in your legs. Good, so nice. Now from here, uncross your arms and punch both fists forward. Super powerful, so strong in your legs. Good, if you can, float up onto the balls of your feet. Keep punching your fists forward. So nice. Good, bring your hands to the floor now and start to strengthen and straighten your legs still up on the balls of the feet. Very good, descend the heels. Once again, nice job. Bend the knees a little bit. Take your left hand to your right shin. Cross your right arm over and grab your left shin. We'll start with a twist to the left now. Unravel your left arm and spin your torso left. Take your left arm alongside of your ear, cross it over, grab your right shin. Unravel, take the right arm to the sky. Swim your right arm alongside of your ear, cross it over, grab the left. Now your arms are right there already. Right arm is on top now. Bend into that Garudasana arms. You have a fist in your right hand. Punch the fist forward and bend your knees deeply like a little baseball umpire. Bum back, chest forward. Good, unravel it, two fists, punch your fists forward, super powerful. Nice, this time take your elbows into your inner thighs and now sit a little lower and stretch the inner thighs. You're doing a great job. This is challenging. Super nice, beautiful, fingertips to the floor. Float onto the heels again as you straighten your legs. Good, lower the heels, folding over yourself. So nice, very good. I'm gonna to turn to the side, you stay where you are. Little bend in your knees. Take your hands forward like downward facing dog. So you're in between like a wide leg forward fold and a down dog. Come up on your fingertips so it's nice and light. Good bend in the knees. Very nice, take your right hand now in line with your spine. So like same position as third eye, belly button, right hand is dividing your mat. And now take your left hand across, grab your right shin, and now spin under yourself. Tuck your chin into your right armpit and breathe. Good, put your left hand where your right hand was. Take your right hand to your left shin and now spin under the left and tuck your chin right into your armpit. Might even be able to see the ceiling up there. So good. Unravel it, both hands out like you were out at that down dog, in between a down dog and a wide leg forward fold. Walk your hands back in, walk your hands towards the top of your mat, pivot into a low lunge, and then step to a down dog. For just a moment, lower to your knees. Take the knees a little bit wide, big toes to touch and press back to a little seedling position, hands to heels, forehead on the mat. And take a couple big breaths here. Just letting yourself be soothed by the sound of your own breath. So nice. Walk your hands back forward. Inhale, come up to all fours. And exhale, take it back. Okay, this is it in terms of our little frisky series. Take your right foot forward. 
Get your right knee right in your armpit so you're well organized. And now you're gonna launch forward into a standing split. So weight the right leg and pick your left leg up. Now here, you can, I want everyone to take their chest forward. So this might look like fingertips on the floor, but you can see my right knee is bent and I'm lengthening from my sternum all the way to my lifted leg. Option two is to grab a hold of your right ankle and straighten your arms as you take your chest forward and kick the left leg higher. Couple big breaths. Okay, this is where it's gonna get interesting. Bring your fingertips to the floor and now cross your left leg behind your right leg. And as you do that, your right heel is gonna lift. So you can see I'm on the ball of my right foot. My left foot is flat. Now bend your left knee into your right knee. And right away, you'll feel here, like my hands are very light. I don't need them anymore because of the virtue of my left knee fitting my right knee. Now find that fold. So it's the fold in the hip crease, left knee into right knee, and now grab a hold of your right heel and get your right knee into your armpit. So it's left knee into right knee, right knee is in my armpit, left hand to your sacrum. And now look forward and back bend, pull up on the heel. And as you do that, start to spin your chest to the left. Keep fitting all those pieces together and it will sustain you. You'll be able to spin the twist open. Left knee into right knee, right knee into your armpit, left arm to the sky and put a spin on it. So good, beautiful. Take your left hand down, take your right hand down and straighten both of your legs in this cross-legged Uttanasana. Try to get your little baby toes in one line. Now bring your palms to touch. Trace the center line, flip your palms, take your prayer hands high, open it up. So good, bring your hands back to your heart and fold back down. Listen, your left foot is gonna travel to the back right corner of your mat and then you're gonna cross your right leg over your left leg. So you're in a little bent kneed, cross-legged, downward facing dog. Now swing your left foot to the top of your mat and get your knee right in your armpit again for the other side. So same thing, launch forward, bend in that left knee, right leg high. The stability here is coming from the bend of the knee and the fold in the hip. And then from here, take your sternum forward, pull on the back of the left ankle if you wish so that your hands free, sternum forward, right leg high. Study the breath. Feel the support of fitting yourself. Good, fingertips on the floor, cross your right leg behind your left. Left heel will raise up off of the floor. Bend right knee into left knee. Stay in the fold of your hip. Nice and powerful, sternum forward. Right hand to your sacrum. Find the back bend and grab a hold of your left heel with your left hand. Again, what's holding the twist together is the right knee in the left knee and the left knee in your armpit. Start to spin your chest to the right, out of the contact of the fold. Heart goes to the right. So good, you guys, I'm very proud of you. Take your right hand to the floor. Straighten your two legs gently, go easy. Fold over yourself. Trace the center line. Prayer hands high. Fold back down. Good. Take your left foot across your mat and your right foot back to the left corner. And then cross your left leg in front of your right. Down dog at the back of the mat with crossed legs. Uncross your feet. Lower to all fours. Inhale and take a little back bend on all fours, a little cat cow. Exhale back to child's pose. Inhale, rise, a little back bend. Exhale back to child's. One more time, inhale to rise. And exhale back. Good. Nice job. Come up to all fours, grab your blankets, and let's take a seat. One or two blankets underneath of you. Place your seat 
up on your blanket, extend your legs out in front of you. It's amazing when you start to fit yourself, have your blocks handy, what you can accomplish and how light things become. If you got any of those poses today and they're very difficult, you might not have gotten them the first time. When you do get them, you'll feel how light and effortless they are. It's not that you're not working, but you're, you have a right effort. So you're limiting muscling your way through things and instead using great nature to leverage yourself. So get right on your perineum. Bend your knees so that the angle of the pelvis changes. Take your arms up by your ears. Get nice and long and then fold forward hands to heels. And if you wish, grab your blocks to create another point of contact and place them on the soles of your feet. And then you can wiggle your bum back. Lengthening from your pubic bone through the crown of your head. Could image the breath traveling up the backs of the legs. And as you exhale, it's pouring up the back and out the crown of the head. Lengthen the front of your spine and nice and easy, slowly come up. Very nice job. Okay, let's come to lie on our backs, a little short Shavasana. Nice quick practice today. If you wish, you can take a blanket and roll it up under your shoulder blades to facilitate a little bit of opening across the chest. Blanket or a towel under the scapula, your shoulder blades, the tip of the shoulder blades, and then chest wide. Let your feet fall open. And allow yourself to rest on your back. And close your eyes. And for a moment, just observe the body breathing, this other gift of great nature. By no virtue of our own, the breath just happens. It arises from nothing, returns to nowhere. Atmospheric pressure, the planet supports you. And what a reminder that we're held and that whether we feel like we belong with others or not, we do belong here on this planet. And our personal sphere is part of the greater whole. All the energies of the universe reside in you like a drop removed from the ocean. Even in moments of separateness, someone somewhere is unrolling their mat taking a deep breath and chanting the invocation. Someone somewhere is practicing with you. Let yourself be held. A nice deep breath in through your nose. Long breath out. 
Start to brush your thumb across your fingers so you can feel your own touch. Wiggle your ankles, roll out your wrists. When you're ready, bring the soles of your feet to the floor. And then come to a fetal position on one side for just a moment. And then use your top hand and nice and easy, help yourself up to a seat. Slide your blanket under your bum. Sit up very, very tall. Organize yourself, connect into the ground below, connected to the universal above you. And we'll finish practice just pumping out a couple of bati breath. Take your arms up in the shape of a V, equilateral triangle, strength, structure, and stability. When you're ready, take a nice deep breath in and start to snap the abdomen back, forcing the exhale out the nose. The inhale will happen naturally when you're ready. Good, keep going out, 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 out. Just clearing out any remnants of anything that need to be released today, making space for whatever is new. Out, out, out. Exhale completely, stay empty. Take a deep breath in. Hook your thumbs, three little sips. One little sniff, hold your breath. Exhale, let it fall like grace, water, rain descending. Just give it a moment, bow your chin. You may not be meant to fit everyone else, but you are always meant to fit you. And you have a place and a purpose on this planet. Even if you feel like you don't belong, you can always come and put a knee in an armpit, a hand on a heel, and remember that you belong to you. Rub your hands together in front of your face. Cup your warm palms over your eyes, fingertips on your hairline. Open your eyes behind your palms, let in the dark. Release your palms, let in the light, and welcome yourself back. Thank you so much for practicing with me today.